Hello and welcome back to English Today. And this is DVD 7 and the third DVD in your elementary level. And in this DVD, you will see another two episodes of our story, That's Life, followed by our special TV programmes. In the cinema program, they will be talking about the Sundance Film Festival, followed by a debate about e-learning. Then, in the grammar section, we will study more about adjectives, in particular, the comparatives and the superlatives. So, happy studying. Well, guys, why don't we go to the cinema tonight? That's a great idea. What's on? Well, there's the new film of Schwarzenegger. That should be good. You're joking, right? No, I'm not. What would you suggest? How about going to the disco? The disco? Are you crazy, Alice? That's not even music. That's simply noise. Come on, Peter. It's Saturday night. We have to do something special. Something exciting. And going dancing is surely more exciting than going to the cinema. I agree with Alice. Let's go dancing. <laughs> what about a third choice? I guess Anne is right. Why don't we try to find a good compromise? Come on, guys. How boring and old-fashioned you are. And you are more frivolous than I am, Alice. Come on, guys. Don't argue now, please. Let's vote on it. Well, Alice and I want to go dancing. Peter and Anne don't. How about you, Sharon? I don't know. Well, the disco is probably more entertaining than the cinema. Great. Okay, guys, three against two. Let's go dancing. <laughs> Hello, and welcome back to English Today for some more English. Now, what would you prefer? Discotheque or cinema? Dancing or a film? Well, we're going to look at comparatives now. I have to buy a camera and I need to choose one. I have to make a choice, so I have to compare two different types. Here I have two types, look. This one here and this one here. Now they're quite different. Listen to the language I use when I compare them, okay? Now, this camera is smaller than this one. This is really quite big. It's bigger than this. And it's also heavier, this camera, than this one. This is a light camera, so it's lighter than this model. Um, now, this model looks more sophisticated and probably more artistic than this one, whereas this one looks more practical, but maybe less complicated. What do you think? Um, what else? Well, this is definitely more expensive than this one. This is probably cheaper, I think, because this has a big lens as well. So, I'm not sure. What do you think? I like the idea of a more sophisticated camera, but I think it's more expensive. So I think I'll have to go for the cheaper one, which is the digital one. I think I'll choose this. All right? Good. Now, let's go and have a look at the language and see how we formulate comparatives in English. All right? If you have a one-syllable word, you remember one-syllable words like cheap, small, hot, high, then to make the comparative, it's easy. We add ER to the adjective. So cheap becomes cheaper. 
Small becomes smaller. Hot becomes hotter. Notice we double the T. High becomes higher. So some examples are the new model is lighter than the old model, or London is safer than New York. Today is hotter than yesterday. All right, so those are adjectives with one syllable. But what happens if you have adjectives with three syllables or more? Look at the examples. Interesting is an adjective with three syllables. Interesting, no, four syllables. So it becomes more interesting. You see what happens? We put more in front of the adjective. So more interesting. Difficult. How many syllables? Difficult, difficult. Okay, so it becomes more difficult. Therefore, the example we have next is the new model is more practical. Or London is more expensive than Madrid, for example. This test is more difficult than the last test. So you see, how we formulate the comparative depends on the adjective that we use. If it's a one-syllable adjective, we add ER, cheap, cheaper. If it's three syllables or more, we add more in front of the adjective, like more difficult. Okay? Now, we are going to go back to that slice where the girls are getting ready to go dancing. They use a lot of comparatives in the conversation. Listen carefully and try and recognize them. Okay? Great. See you next time. Bye. Here's my party hat. How do you like it? You look great. I envy you. Hats really suit you. Well, I envy your room, Anne. But with all this traffic, how do you sleep? Oh, I'm used to it. Which disco are we going to? Paradise. It's a new disco on King's Road. It's very nice. Did Tom and you go there together? Yes, we went last Saturday. We spent a nice night together. Maybe I asked the wrong question. You don't like Tom, do you? He's boring. Very boring. Besides, he's an Aries. And he talks too much. Mm. Last night, for example, he showed me all the pictures of his holiday in the Alps. He talked for an hour about the mountains. But I hate the mountains. Why do you say that? The mountains are beautiful and spectacular. I prefer the beach. It's more relaxing and entertaining. Oh, I don't know. I think the beach is more boring than the mountains. Why do you say that? Well, think about it. Lying on the beach every day, it's much more interesting to be walking in the countryside. Yes, but it's usually colder in the mountains. I think the beach is also more romantic. Girls, stop talking nonsense. How do I look? You look very pretty, Alice. Thanks, Sharon, but you look better than me. No, how can you say that? You're much more tan than I am. Yes, but you are in better shape. And me? How do I look? You are very pretty too, Anne. I'm sure I'm not nearly as beautiful as you. Come on, guys. Start making stupid comparisons. Let's just say that we're all different. Hey, girls. OK, are you ready? I need your advice. Which shirt is better according to you? The red one. It's much better than the blue one for a disco night. And you, Sharon? What do you think? Well, 
I think the red one is funnier, while the blue one is more professional. I prefer the blue one. So, girls, which shirt should I put on? I told you, the red one. With that one on, you look more macho. Yes, macho. That's the right word. Really? Macho? <laughs> I like it. OK, I'll put on the red shirt. Do you agree with Alice, Sharon, about being macho, I mean? Come on, Jack. It's late. The disco's waiting for us. Hello again, and welcome back. I want to continue talking about comparatives in this lesson, because last time we talked about how we compare with adjectives with one syllable and three syllables and more. Remember, we said hotter than, but more difficult than. So what happens if we have adjectives with only two syllables? For example, like heavy or easy. Well, we say heavier and easier, but the spelling changes. And that's what I want to show you on the screen now, because the Y at the end of easy and heavy disappears. Look. Happy is an example with an adjective with two syllables ending in Y. Happy becomes happier. Take out the Y, put in I, I-E-R, okay? Then funny, funnier, and easy, as we said before, easier. Heavy again, another example, heavier. Okay, so be careful. Remember that the Y becomes an I. Some examples. I'm happier than you. His joke was funnier than mine. English is easier than Russian. All right? So that's important to remember. But that's not all. There are some real exceptions, as always, in the English language, also in the comparative form. And that's what I want to look at with you now. It's very important. The question is, what is the comparative of good? The comparative is completely different. It's better. So you would say, this camera is better than that camera. All right, so good becomes better. What about bad? Again, it's completely different. Bad becomes worse. Today's weather is worse than yesterday's. Okay, bad, worse. And one more example, far, which means distance, far becomes further or even farther. Both possibilities, father written F-A-R-T-H-E-R, as you can see on the screen, all right? So those are the big exceptions. Good becomes better. Bad becomes worse. Far becomes farther or further. You choose. Examples, walking is better than running. Today, the weather is worse than yesterday. And Southampton is further than Brighton. All right, so those are all the most important things that you need to know when you're comparing things. Don't forget the exceptions. They're very, very common and easy to forget. All right, great. So I'll see you next lesson where no doubt you will be speaking English better. <laughs> okay, see you then. Bye. So, Tom, which do you think is the best? Hmm, I think Prague is the most interesting. Are you sure? I think Vienna is more exciting than Prague. Yes, but it's certainly the most expensive tour. It doesn't matter. My father is going to pay for everything. 
And what about Madrid? I think it's probably the most exciting. Why do you say that? Well, the nightlife. I'm sure there are a lot of discos. That's true. But it is certainly the hottest city. You're a good friend, Tom, but you are so boring. I don't really care about the weather. I just want to enjoy myself. This trip is my father's birthday present to me. I want to go to Europe's most interesting city, but also the most special and the most entertaining one. I see. Well, I think all three are interesting cities. Hi, guys. What are you doing? My father is going to give me a trip for my birthday, so I'm choosing where I would like to go. Oh, really? That's great. Are you going alone? No. My father promised to come with me. Oh. Well, do you already have an idea of where you want to go? Not yet. I can't make up my mind between Vienna, Prague and Madrid. Tom was making some precious suggestions. But she isn't taking my advice, as usual. Well, I think Prague is probably the oldest city. But Vienna is the most interesting one. There are a lot of important meetings in Vienna. Oh, and lots of museums too. Well, Madrid also has a lot of museums. Do you agree with that? Yes, that's true. But Madrid is certainly the hottest city. <laughs> oh my God, Anne. You were like Tom. You both talk nonsense. I think you two should go out together. I think you would get on well. Alice, what are you talking about? You're joking, right? Well, not really. I think Tom is perfect for you, Anne. Come on, Alice. Stop being foolish. You're embarrassing us. Really? There's no need to be ashamed. Listen, I'm going to leave you two alone now so you can get to know each other better. Bye. Mm -hmm. Hello again. Now that's an interesting couple. Tom, who is an obsessive museum goer, Anne, who is an obsessive cleaner. Put them together and what have you got? The cleanest museum in the world. <laughs> now, the cleanest is an example of the grammar form of the superlative. And that's what I want to look at with you now. I want to give you some examples. So listen carefully to what I say. All right? Good. So. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Are you having problems opening your bottles? Well, I have the solution for you. Here it is. A revolutionary bottle opener. This is a bottle opener. Have you been using these old models like this and been having problems? Well, this is the most intelligent and the most revolutionary bottle that you can find. Bottle opener, it's called, okay? So, how does it work? You take your bottle of wine. You open it up like this. You open it here. You put it on the top of the bottle, like that, over the cork. Then, in this position, you see, hold it strong. Take the lever like this and you pull over like that. Okay? Takes a little bit of effort, but not like that one. Then, you push it back and what happens? Bingo! Out comes the cork. Then, the same action, hold it tight, pull it over, the cork comes out, and we are ready to drink. This is, ladies and gentlemen, the most effective, the newest, the quickest, 
the smartest and the most revolutionary bottle opener that you will ever find. And it's the most economical. It's the cheapest. It only costs 20 euro for you. So buy one today and let's pour some wine and toast to the most superlative bottle opener in the world. Cheers. Mmm, that's nice. Great. That was the superlative. Let's go and see it on the screen. Mmm, nice wine. Now, when we have an adjective with one syllable, like cheap, what we do is we add the at the beginning to make it superlative, and then we add est to the adjective. Look at the examples. It's the cheapest, the newest, the quickest, the smartest bottle opener in the world. Okay, so the plus est at the end. Now, if the adjective is two or three or more syllables, it changes, as I said, and it becomes the most effective. Now, the adjective doesn't change, but in front of it, we put the most, the most effective. It's the most economical bottle opener. It's the most beautiful. It's the most revolutionary bottle opener. Okay, so again, be careful. Is it a one syllable adjective? Is it a two or three or four syllable adjective? Because it changes. Great. Now, Let's go back to life, that's life, where Jack and Peter are talking about football. They're talking about the best football team in the world, okay? And I'll see you later. Cheers. Hey, Peter, did you see the match yesterday evening? Which match? Which match? Ajax versus Juventus. Those teams are boring. Excuse me. Uh, excuse me. Ajax is the best football club in the world. I'm afraid I don't have a clue. I know that only music matters. <laughs> anyway, in your opinion, which is the best team? I don't know. I heard Arsenal is the best one of all time. They've got the most aggressive players, the most important coach, the toughest goalkeeper. Peter. Peter. You are so mistaken. Okay. What's so great about Ajax? Well, first of all, their defense is superb. It's much more intelligent than Arsenal's. No. Still. No. But you promised me. You're always busy. No, I don't want to go anymore. Anyway, thanks, Daddy. Thanks for your present. You are the worst father in the world. Don't worry, I'm gonna have a great birthday all the same. Yes, with my friends. They do love me. Bye. Is everything okay, Alice? No, nothing is okay. My father keeps on being the same. Oh, come on, Alice. Don't cry, please. Tell us what happened. Well, you know, I told you my father decided to give me a trip for my birthday. Well, he promised to come with me. And just now, he told me that he can't anymore because he has some important work to do, as usual. Oh, don't be angry with him. 
Even if he has something important to do, you can leave for your trip anyways. No, I don't want to go anymore. Well, don't worry, Alice. We are going to give a big party for you. Isn't that true, guys? Absolutely. Yes, of course. You are the most brilliant, the smartest, and the funniest roommate we've ever had. Even if sometimes you are a bit lazy. <laughs> you need a special party. Thanks a lot. You are the best friends in the world. Hello again. Now, you know, Mr. Monkey reminds me of Jack. He's obsessed with football, but he's very sweet. Did you hear what he said to Alice? He said, you're the most brilliant roommate we've ever had. That's really sweet. And did you hear them talking about football? Well, I don't know what you thought. They said, this was Jack. He said, Ajax is the best football team in the world. Debatable. Alice said her father was the worst father. And Jack then said, you are the funniest roommate that I have ever had. And so these are all examples of exceptions in the superlative form. I want to go to the screen now and look at those because they're not that easy. So, look at the first example. With adjectives ending in Y, we remove the Y as we've learned before, and we add I-E-S-T. So, funny becomes the funniest. Easy becomes the easiest. So the examples are, you're the funniest roommate I have ever had, for example. Or Naples is the noisiest city in Italy. Or it's the happiest day. All right, so those are two syllable adjectives ending in Y. Now look at the exceptions. Remember we have already learned that good, bad and far are exceptions in the comparative. Well, look at the superlative. Good in the superlative becomes the best. So it's good, better, the best. Bad in the, com the comparative is worse, remember? The superlative is the worst. Notice the T. Bad, worse, the worst. Don't forget to pronounce the T. And then far, the comparative we said was farther or further, and the superlative form is the farthest or the furthest. Okay? So, those are the three most important exceptions. You need to learn those by heart because Words like good and bad, we use every day. So try and memorize them, all right? And I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye. Good morning, good morning. Welcome to this week's edition of Talk Cinema. Here in the studio with me is Sanjeev Gupta, our cinema expert. Good morning, Sanjeev. Good morning. Well, Sanjeev, what are you talking about today? Today I want to talk about the Sundance Film Festival. Sounds interesting. I've heard of the Sundance Festival. What exactly is it? Well, to put it simply, Sundance is a festival for independent films and people interested in them. OK. Can you explain what an independent film is? Independent films, sometimes they're called indies, are films that don't come from the major Hollywood studios. They're produced and financed by the directors themselves, and they're usually low-budget productions. But of course, this doesn't mean that they're appreciated less than normal commercial films. Of course, independent films can be very interesting, and often they deal with contemporary issues. Exactly. You can't compare independent films with Hollywood blockbusters. They're two completely different things. 
Well, Hollywood films are more spectacular. They're usually high budget productions and the money comes from the Hollywood studios, not from the directors. There's more money to spend so they can feature famous stars. There's another important difference here. Hollywood movies are distributed throughout the world. That's how they make so much money at the box office. Right, Sanjeev? Right, Lucy. On the other hand, independent films generally win the praise of cinema critics but make less money at the box office. OK, let's go back to the Sundance Film Festival. Well, this festival has nothing in common with the Oscars night in Los Angeles, but it is the most important film festival in the world for independent films. It's important because it promotes the work of many young directors. When did the festival start? Robert Redford organised the first festival 25 years ago. The festival takes its name from Sundance Kid, the character Robert Redford plays in the film Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. Today, the Sundance is divided into two sections. The main section is called the American Competition and is for American films and documentaries. The second section is the World Cinema Competition. This is for all other films. You know, Sundance is great fun. In addition to the films, there are parties and concerts and also special meetings for film students. Well, the Sundance Festival sounds fun. It's smaller and younger than other film festivals. There aren't lots of Hollywood stars. The awards aren't as prestigious as the Oscars. But it's an important festival. Right, Sanjeev? Right. And don't forget, it's great fun. OK. Thank you, Sanjeev. And goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, and see you next week for another edition of Talk Cinema. So, the Sundance Festival takes its name from the Sundance Kid, the character that Robert Redford plays. A character is a person in a film. And we say that an actor plays a character. And let's have a look at some of the vocabulary and expressions we use to talk about films. There are independent films and Hollywood blockbusters. First of all, what is an independent film? It's a low-budget production that is not produced or financed by a major Hollywood studio. Major means big and important. A low-budget production is a film made with little money. And what's a Hollywood blockbuster? It's a high-budget production that is produced and financed by a major Hollywood studio. A high-budget production is a film made with lots of money. To produce a film means to make a film, and to finance a film means to find the money to make a film. We say a film is produced by and financed by someone. So, an independent film is usually produced and financed by the director of the film. The director is the person responsible for making a film. He or she directs the actors and decides how to tell the story of the film. Independent films are sometimes called indies, which comes from the word independent. Because Hollywood blockbusters are high-budget productions, they can feature famous stars. Famous stars are famous actors. So, if a film features famous stars, it means that famous actors and actresses are in the film. Pretty Woman features Julia Roberts and Richard Gere. We say Hollywood blockbusters are commercial films. This means they are easy to watch and easy to sell. They're made with the purpose of making money. All right, cinema lovers, that's it for now. Bye, and see you again soon. Hello. Welcome to this week's edition of Let's Talk, the Saturday evening debate with our commentators Tom and Marie. Good, Good evening. evening. Tonight, I'd like to hear your thoughts about e-learning. You know, when I was a teenager, I hated school and studying. As you can imagine, my exam results weren't very good, so I couldn't go to university. Now, I'd like to study philosophy, and I'm thinking of taking a distance learning course using my computer and the internet. Well, e-learning. 
The E means electronic. So e-learning is electronic learning. This is a new and convenient way of studying. Many universities around the world now offer distance learning degree courses via the internet. You can take a course from a university in England or in the States without leaving your home. That's true, but you need to have a lot of motivation to take an e-learning course. Why? Well, good time management skills are very important for successful e-learning. You mustn't waste time. Uh, you must study a little every day. It isn't always easy, especially if you work. OK. <laughs> e-learning courses can be more difficult. Traditional courses can be better. But there are many advantages to studying for a degree at a distance. What are these advantages? In, in fact, Let's talk about the advantages and the disadvantages of e-learning. OK. One advantage, you can study when you like and where you like. I see. So it's a flexible way of learning. Exactly. Another advantage is that e-learning gives people a second chance to take a university course without giving up your job. You can study and work at the same time. Uh, I'm sorry, Marie. I don't agree. When you work, it can be very difficult to find time to study. Besides, students can feel lonely and isolated when they study by themselves. Wait a minute. This is where the E, the electronic part, helps. There's lots of interaction with other students and course tutors. Some courses use virtual classrooms to teach small groups. You can see your tutor and other students on your computer screen. You can talk with them and use text chat or email and discussion forums too. Today, most courses include study skills information on how to study well at a distance. OK, but some course materials can be really boring, just like reading books online. And some e-tutors are very inexperienced and don't know how to teach in this new way. And remember that dropout rates are high for e-learning courses. Yes, I agree with some of what you say, but good multimedia course materials can be very stimulating as they use audio, images and text together to teach. OK, OK, I see that you both have strong opinions on this topic. This discussion is very interesting, but I'm afraid we've run out of time. So. E-learning, the new independent way of studying with advantages and disadvantages. My philosophy course? Hmm. I'll have to think. <laughs> so, goodbye to our commentators, Marie and Tom. Goodbye. 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 And goodbye to you. And see you next time on our discussion group, Let's Talk. Well, I'd like to take an e-learning course, but I'm not sure that I have the motivation I need. Notice how we say to take a course. For example, to take an English course means to study English. To take a distance learning course means to study from home. If I take an e-learning course, I can study at home and send my work to my course tutor via internet. The course tutor is the teacher for the course. Most people go to university. To go to university means to study full time at a university. We can also say someone is at university. For example, I'm at university means I'm studying for a degree at a university. A degree is the qualification you get when you complete a university course. A degree course can take from three to five years depending on the subject you study. I wanted to study philosophy at university. We say to study a subject at university. For example, my friend Sasha is studying mathematics at university. We can say she goes to university. She's at university. She's studying mathematics at university. She's taking a mathematics degree at university. We can also say she's studying for a degree in mathematics. Notice, we can say either a mathematics degree or a degree in mathematics. With e-learning courses, 
People study for a degree at a distance. This means they study at home. They don't go to the university to study. But Tom said the dropout rates for these courses are high. The dropout rates is the number of people who don't finish the course. The verb to drop out means to not finish a course. We can say to drop out of school or to drop out of university. OK, well, study hard, and I'll see you on Saturday for another edition of Let's Talk. Goodbye.